If you look at anything that builds a man into a man, there's a degree of suffering. So many men say, I want to be the man, but they don't want to suffer. They don't want to fight. And I don't understand why, because even if you look at a superhero movie, they tell you, even in superhero movies, they make it very clear. Batman's parents died. That's why he's Batman. It's very hard to become a man and have a man who's respected and has stories and is capable when he only had a nice life and nice experiences. It's usually the things that made you the best version of you are usually the worst things that happened to you. All the bad things have to happen. There's no way to get there without the bad things. Where do you find the strength when you're in these difficult situations? I always find the strength from, from my last name. I'm Andrew Tate. I'm Andrew Tate, so I just have to do it. I'm in a Romanian jail cell. I wake up, there's cockroaches in my bed. They're all over my face. What am I gonna do, cry? Am I gonna go and sign a piece of paper and say I'm guilty? Am I gonna sell my brother out? No, I'm gonna take the cockroaches off my mouth. I'm gonna do some push-ups, because I'm Andrew Tate. When shit really gets hard, honor and courage and bravery and your last name is all you've ever had. Especially with men, none of them are bestowed with the things that the masculine essence needs to be a good man. You need pride, you need honor. Dad dying was the hardest part for me and Andrew to go through ever. Mm. But what you have to understand with things like that is you don't actually have a choice. People say this all the time, like, how did you deal with that? It's like, well, what was, what was my alternative? Bring him back to life? There is no way out of it. Mm. So you can either, and people say this all the time, oh, my mother's got cancer, she's going to die in six months. What do I do? I say, enjoy the next six months with her. As much, like, there are lots of situations in life where your hands are tied. So when, with dad dying, it was a simple matter of, okay, you can let this destroy you, which is an option, and people do this all the time, drink themselves to death, I don't know, start cutting themselves, whatever stuff people do to cope with difficult situations, or you can be sad anyway, because you're sad either way, mm -hmm. and work 18 hours a day. And in fact, I said that the time I was working the most, when I was around 27, 28, I think he died when I was 27. So. You can work 18 hours a day, not let anything distract you and stay focused on the mission. So that way you have less time to think about it and you can be sad while you're working. And then, you know, when you start to come to terms with everything, you've got millions of dollars as opposed to, oh, I've come to terms with everything, but I'm in a rehab clinic. So I think that bad things are going to happen to your life. Matrix Media, they say, why did you get so big? Because I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth, which every man knows is intrinsically true in his heart because God has instilled him with a, a basic degree of morality of right and wrong. I'm saying things to a 17-year-old boy and he's going, he makes sense. I get it. Everything I was told so far just didn't quite click, but this does. And that's what they're so scared of. I was talking about this the other day. I was talking about how I have a, a pet peeve and one of my pet peeves is, is painkillers. And I was being typical me and I was going over the top. And I was discussing with this guy. This guy said, have you got any aspirin? I said, there's no aspirin in my house. And he said, why? I said, brother, you are not facing 1% of the life difficulties I am facing. Think about it. No government's trying to lock you up. The Matrix isn't after you. They're not trying to frame you. Nobody wants you dead. When God finally gives you a tiny headache, to give you something to show you're half a man, a little bit of resilience. You'd be out and take an aspirin. Can you just have a headache? Just have a headache. And not only just have a headache, have a headache and don't mention it, because I don't care. So don't even talk about it. Nobody needs to know. <laughs> what do you want? Do you want therapy? You want sympathy? Nobody cares you have a headache. Shut up. The best way I can describe it, every single second that you're scrolling on your phone or looking at Instagram, etc., there are dudes out there you know, even even so much as selling little coaching calls or, or courses or, you know, who, who you'd want to be like. Mm -hmm. But it's easy. It's easier to sit around and play video games and masturbate than it is to get the money to buy real supercars and seduce beautiful women in the real world. It is much easier. And because it's easier, I feel like a lot of people don't want a way out. So I don't need to give them advice. I feel like the advice is out there. If you're watching this and that, that describes you good, at least you're listening to, to people with a healthy mindset who maybe can inspire you a little bit to try to be like them. Like nearly any problem on earth, whether it's men's mental health, whether it's women's mental health, no matter what it is, whether it's crime, no matter what it is, how do you fix the problem? By building men of caliber, by building men of capability and status and honor and dignity, and by building men of ability to be good standing citizens who are respected by their peers. 
All of it comes back to improving men. All of it. Every single problem you can possibly name, it comes back to building strong men of capability who are respected. That's all. It's the baseline of humanity. Women respect men who stick by their principles and their beliefs. And the principles and beliefs of a man are always to do what he is supposed to do, regardless of how he feels. You must train when you don't feel like training. You must protect when you don't feel like protecting. You must be a good man. And when you're actually a truly good man and a high value man, this is something I absolutely realized in jail. I have no problem suffering if the people I love are not suffering. My children are taken care of. The women I love are taken care of. My mother is taken care of. Everybody around me is fine. Even if they've removed me from my life and locked me in a jail cell, everybody I love is taken care of and is protected and is living good. I must suffer because I am a man. I am the head of my empire. I'm the head of the clan. Of course, I will suffer, but the people I love are not suffering. This is what God has bestowed upon important men since the beginning of time. Not just important men, all men. The men in the Titanic as the boat was going down, about to be sucked into the icy cold water. Some of the last thoughts in those men's head, I know, I know, was at least I saw my daughter and my wife get on that boat. Absolutely. I'm happy to plunge into this ice cold water because there they are, on that boat, away from danger. Everyone we love and everyone in the world who we care about was taken care of and I said Andrew would you rather us both be at liberty but someone else in our life suffer mum suffer our kids suffer the Never. mothers of our children Never. suffer no I'm glad it was me I'm glad I was the one who was suffering and everyone else was okay because that's what being a man means it, the old saying of you know you become the average of the five people you hang around with the most that's that's older than the internet that's saying it predates the internet mm -hmm. but essentially it means the five people who influence you the most um, and, you know, if you do live alone or if you don't have many friends or you don't have a big group of people, what you're watching and what you're listening to influences you massively. So, yeah, cut the crap out. Exactly the same with a, a healthy diet. Mm -hmm. It influences your health. A, health. a healthy mind is exactly the same thing. Scrolling up and down Netflix, watching trash all day is not going to get you anywhere, mm -hmm. literally, ever. Whereas, you know, you might hear a piece of advice in a, in a podcast, in this podcast, that, you know, makes you wake up and think, you know, I actually need to get my shit in order. Stop trying to live like the man unless you've actually become the man first. And that means women. Stop trying to get laid all the time and get beautiful women. Because if you are a nobody, the time and effort it's going to take into convincing a really beautiful woman to go to bed with you is much less time than it would take me or Mike. Because we are a somebody already. So you're burning your hours. Uh, yeah, don't chase women too much. Don't chase having fun too much. Don't chase clout too much. Don't try to be seen in cool places that you can't actually afford to be in. But yeah, people pretend too hard today. And the, the effort it takes to pretend short term will make you look richer or cooler or more successful than you are. But if you take all the time that you spend pretending and actually invest it into trying to become what you're pretending to be, you'll get there. When you're a man, absolutely you're right. It is our job to suffer so the people around us do not suffer. And that's why if you're a man and you're waking up every day and you're not trying your very best to be important or upgrade yourself or upgrade your character or you're lacking motivation, then you have a serious problem because it is your job to be capable of dealing with the insurmountable pressure which God is going to put upon you so that when you suffer, everyone around you does well. Our lives are set up that even if they throw us in a dungeon today, everybody we love will be okay forever. And that is what's most important. That's the most important thing. That's success. And that was absolutely comforting in jail when we discussed that and we said, everyone we love is okay. You and I just have to make it through this. And that's absolutely and utterly comforting. And if you're a man sitting at home right now, you need to sit and say, okay, if they plucked me from my life, if they picked me up and threw me in a room and locked me in a jail cell. Which can happen. Which can happen to anybody, especially as they continue these matrix attacks on masculinity as a whole. Would your wife have a roof over her head? Would your children eat? Would your family be okay? Think about these things. This is what you're working for. You're not working to make money so you can buy a Lamborghini. You're working to make money. You're thinking outside of the box. And you're becoming your best version of yourself so all the people around you will always be okay no matter what happens. It is your job as a man to suffer. And we did our job fantastically, absolutely not as we should. We always will. And we always will. And everybody around us was okay. And that is extremely comforting in times of hardship because we're built for suffering. We were absolutely not leaving the suffering. No matter how close I came to crying inside of that jail cell, I knew all the people around me were safe and all the people around me could eat. And that's all I cared about. I sat in a jail cell making sure I could fix the problems for the people I love outside in the free world from a dungeon. That is what a man does. And you must prepare and set up your life for that. You must be prepared to be plucked from life and understand that everybody around you who once relied on you will still be relying on you even when you sit in that jail cell. 
It's still up to you. You are still the man of the household. You are still the top G of your life.